Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, today I would like to talk to you about the Uninvented Hot Water Courses. There are two distinct courses. Course 1 would, is basically an appreciation course for an understanding how hot water system works. And course 2 is the installer's course which is an, a licensed approved certification course for the individuals. Course 1 outlines how an unvented hot water system operates and the user controls within the system. Course 2, as I said, is a licensed course for operatives who are then permitted to install for clients unvented hot water systems. The unvented hot water systems, the cylinders themselves, can be purchased either as a package or a unit. The unit you purchase is a cylinder and you buy the individual controls which have then got to be fitted to the cylinder. The package, when you buy it from the manufacturer, comes fitted with all the necessary controls and in my opinion it is a bit safer because the operative takes away the responsibility to a certain extent which is then placed on the manufacturer's shoulders. Within the UK, the unvented hot water system, which is pressurised, has two distinct controls, one being the safety controls within the unvented hot water cylinder and two, the user controls. The safety controls are a three tier safety used in the UK which incorporates an ordinary thermostat, a high limit, a high energy cutout thermostat and a temperature pressure relief valve. These three devices must be incorporated within any unvented hot water system. The other group of controls are for the protection of the water supply itself and would incorporate double check valves, line strainers etc and again these group of controls must all be fitted in the system in the proper sequence to prevent any contamination to the supply pipe for, which is provided by the water undertaker. Good afternoon Ladies and gentlemen, moving on from the first discussion, we're now upstairs within the, in the, in the training school and what we're looking at just now is an unvented package. That, if you remember right correctly, was the cylinder incorporating all the controls. The package, if we look at the package, the cylinder and the controls, we then look at the source of energy to heat the water required for this indirect cylinder. There is also a type direct, but this is indirect, which supplies domestic hot water and central heating. The form of energies we can have are electrical only, oil or natural gas, and any of these three energies can be used to heat the source to heat the water required for domestic hot water and central heating. Now the package that we're looking at, as we look at some of the controls here, motorised valves for the central heating, the electrical for the immersor, um, the blow off, the non-return valves, the double check valves etc for the protection of the water supply, the isolation, safe isolation, required so that it can be operated in a safe manner and obviously the expansion vessel above us here which incorporates the expanded hot water because when it's heated it will expand a minimum of 4% which is a 25th of the actual content in the system. The reason we spoke about earlier for the safety devices is the first thermostat would normally operate 
at the at the the, the, the person's hot water requirement, which is 60 degrees, no more than 65, but normally 60. You then have this high limit, high energy cutout, which is set at 80 degrees. Above that, you've got a temperature pressure relief valve at the top there, which the plumber would normally call it the blow off. But I'm telling you the exact proper name of it. And that's in the event that the other two safety control devices fail, then the blow off will discharge the hot water externally from the building in a safe, visible place. What you've got to remember is the temperature of that water. The reason for the safe, visible place is safe being the operative word because the temperature of the water will lift the skin or even the flesh of a human person because of its the nature of the temperature. Carrying on, if we look at the system, the unvented cylinder, the water control side, in a, in a property you have here the stop valve, I know it's a stop cop but the proper name termination is stop valve, on the inlet followed by the line strainer, followed by the expansion relief valve through the tundish. The expansion relief valve if the pressure of the water system is too high in the cold position or there's a fault within the system, the water will discharge through the tundish. So we have the stop valve, line strainer and expansion relief valve with the tundish. That is the controls for the water side. Within the heating site, if you look at this cylinder, as I said before, it's an indirect cylinder. That means there's a coil within the cylinder to control the expansion of hot water when it's heating by the immersor here. In this one we have the immersor with the ordinary thermostat and because it's for training purposes we have a separate expansion relief valve which is normally incorporated within the immersor there so that nobody can tamper with it with a reset button and the expansion relief valve here in the event of the temperature thermostats failing. As I said before the expansion relief will accommodate the expanded hot water as it's heated up. Normally that would take place within the expansion system within a normal heating system but we don't have that so this expansion relief vessel accommodates the expanded hot water as it heats up. The system itself works to a pressure of 3 bar. Because it operates at a pressure of 3 bar, the boiling temperature within the cylinder changes from 100 degrees centigrade to 144 degrees centigrade. That's why you require the safety valves because if you can imagine what the consequences would be if that vessel was to burst or release hot water at a pressure and temperature of 144 degrees centigrade at 3 bar, it would be cause considerable damage to the property and also to the risk of life. When we look at the heating controls themselves, we have motorised valves which will control the heating side. We've looked at the Mercer already. This one is suitable for gas supply uh, to heat a boiler, to heat the water, which isn't there at this point in time. But it's not necessary for a training purpose because we have the heating element, the immersor, within the vessel. And some vessels come with a, a heating element, the immersor there, and one at a higher level. This one only incorporates the one. Drain points fitted, 
and as I say it can run a domestic hot water heating system which can incorporate five, six or seven radiators quite comfortably. Personally I would have this system in preference to a conventional hot water system because you'll get a better supply of hot water.